Okay, today is Saturday, September 16th, 2023. So, uh, I wasted about two hours. Uh, so, I was thinking of dyeing this middle section here to kind of give it some pizzazz. Uh, but, you know, you start thinking about, you know, over time, that's going to start uh, wearing thin and then it's going to look stupid. So I figured, okay, well, to to add that cyan accent, because the whole plane is basically going to be uh, light blue, uh, similar to that color there uh, with with black accents. So I wanted to have the, the black seats with blue accents, uh, but they don't make such a creature, uh, at least not ones that I wanted. <clears throat> I think there were some seats that had blue accents, but they were really ugly <laughs> and they didn't look very comfortable. At least the ones that I could find, or they were just way too expensive. So um, uh, I uh, I got I started taping this first. I started, tried using masking tape, and uh, I I guess the good news is very little will stick to this. The bad news is very little will stick to this. <laughs> so uh, I tried uh, uh, masking tape. I tried uh, packing tape. I tried. Uh, 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 duct tape and I even tried uh, uh, this you know, foil tape uh, which is quite a bit stickier than uh, most other tapes and that worked the best but it still uh, uh, likes to pull away and you know you've got to get it like right up against these seams uh, to prevent any overspray or you're going to get some ghosting and it's just going to look awful uh, so uh, uh, instead of just looking awful I think I'm just going to leave it leave them the way they are uh, and do the black blue accents uh, you know elsewhere in the cockpit it's not that big a deal I mean it still looks looks nice uh, I just wanted to kind of continue the, the same motif so uh, I'm still waiting for uh, they're supposed to arrive today but if they do uh, they're not going to arrive in time for me to be able to do anything so uh, uh, the rest of the day is just cleaning up this mess in preparation for doing the wings uh, one thing I, I haven't mentioned is uh, there are two DEX pieces. Uh, uh, I can't remember what it stands for offhand, but uh, they're uh, you know angular pieces that that kind of come out like that uh, from the front of this. Uh, I received the uh, the drawing. It's basically a one to one template for uh, for making those pieces that that fit on uh, on here. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to also be spending some time taking uh, this whole thing off uh, so I can do that. Okay, today is Sunday, September 17th. Uh, just out here uh, on a rainy day getting the uh, leading edge uh, extensions made, the uh, Lex pieces. So uh, I just finished tracing this first one, and I'm, uh, so they go on the you know the front corners of the uh, of the uh, stabilator right uh, next to the frame. So you can see on the drawing that's that's where they go. So uh, uh, this was sent to me afterward uh, uh, from Bead. Uh, uh, they're one-to-one -one templates, so I don't really need to measure anything. And, and really, it's kind of a good thing that they did because there's no measurements at all on the drawings. So uh, uh, I didn't look through the uh, the other uh, uh, sections. There there might be uh, uh, non-one-to-one uh, drawings, but uh, this is a lot easier because you just cut it out and uh, you know, make sure it's laying perfectly flat and taut uh, and then just trace it out. Uh, and then once you have one made, you can use that as the stem template for the next one. So uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I think I might need to get a, uh, a workmate table to uh, to bend these properly because I'm going to have to bend them. Uh, you know, this part here, I'm going to have to bend it over a, uh, a piece of pipe to get the proper uh, uh, the proper curve. So uh, uh, I might go get myself, and, and I should have done it a long time ago because. Uh, 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 they're just handy to have so uh, I think uh, before I actually bend these I'm going to go get one of those uh, even if it's just a cheapo uh, table to uh, uh, to bend these because you kind of got to uh, bend it around a pipe and you need something that can clamp on both sides 
uh, you know, here and here to uh, uh, to do it properly. So I think that's uh, how I'm going to go about that. But for now, uh, the project is just getting these cut out and trimmed to size and all that stuff, and the uh, you know drilling and everything. So okay, it's uh, later today, and I think I'm going to call it uh, a day. So uh, I got. Uh, this one cut out, uh, used it as a template for this one, and uh, just uh, lined up the uh, punch uh, on the template and made all the uh, uh, marks for the uh, the holes. I'll get them bent first, uh, and the the little tabs and stuff made uh, for the edges, uh, and of course the uh, the one part that I didn't make, which is. So the one part that I haven't made yet is that one and these little tab pieces. Uh, that piece uh, goes on the uh, on the uh, inside here to or on the inside over there to uh, reinforce the uh, the edge uh, of the uh, extension piece. Might not have them installed, but I'll at least have the parts made. So uh, stay tuned again. Okay, uh, today is. Uh, Tuesday, uh, September 19th, 2023. So you can uh, see this one is quite a bit more uh, forward than the other one. I took the other seat out, uh, uh, number one, so I can see the, the full deflection without the seat in the way. So I can actually feel the, the, the stop there. And, and you can see that stick is way too far forward, at least for the height of these site seats. Maybe if you were sitting almost uh, level with the uh, you know, the pan there it might be okay, but with the height of these seats, uh, uh, it's, you know, basically in your crotch. So, uh, this one ended up actually being 30 degrees. I, I, I cut a 20 degree and a 30 degree, uh, and, uh, tested both. And I'm not completely sold on the 30 degree because it is a little far forward. Uh, the I forget the inside diameter of this. Uh, it's really, really uh, tight. Like it's there's no play in there. Uh, obviously, I still need to bolt it. But uh, so uh, these are three and a half. Uh, I also need to play with possibly making this shorter in order to uh, to get more of this down in there because of the curve. I don't know if it's even possible. Uh, the three and a half uh, is about the maximum you can get. Uh, without hitting this curve and both of them are identical they're both three and a half from the uh, the vertex there so uh if i move the, so the seat for me actually has to come forward quite a bit so uh it's kind of hard to tell because uh, i was looking down yeah that's the uh, that's about where it's comfortable for me so the the seat is uh you know just about a couple inches away from the, the front of that, uh, uh, this part here. And uh, it just goes into the seat. So the other issue I may have to deal with is also the release for the uh, seat uh, is a little far forward. You can see uh, it's, it's just barely clearing that uh, before it hits the stop. Uh, luckily for me, my legs are long enough uh, that it's comfortable, although I, uh, I think it might be prudent to just deform that a little bit uh, if it's not too difficult uh, just to get around that stick uh, so I can pull the seat up a little bit more if I want. Uh, there's really no uh, solution uh, as far as the stick goes. It's too close to the uh, the bottom to dip, put another band in. So uh, uh, that shouldn't be too difficult to uh, to deform, I don't think. Uh, so uh, I have the uh, the hardware that's that arrived today from uh, Aircraft Spruce. So all of these uh, El Cheapo bolts will get replaced with basically AN4 bolts. Uh, the other thing I'm going to put in there is, uh, like I mentioned in the previous video, uh, uh, where those long bolts are, I'm going to put another brace uh, in between. So the bolt will go through the brace uh, and then into the, the uh, landing gear bucket. So... That is pretty much all I did today was just, uh, I came in late, so I didn't get a ton done. I may go back to the uh, the 20 degree one just because, you know, that 
forward deflection, it's actually a little difficult to reach. Uh, I have to just lean forward about an inch to go all the way forward. Okay, I uh, decided to try and put the uh, the 20 degree on one before I left. You can see it doesn't, uh, uh, the deflection isn't quite so extreme. And I think I'm going to go with this one because uh, I, uh, I can fully reach this direction. And it, of course the seat's all the way back, but uh, uh, I can get in uh, by, you know, pushing into the, the seat a little bit. Uh, the only uh, caveat with this one is I definitely need to deform uh, that handle uh, so it's not in the way. Uh, not a huge deal. It, it's only like, you know, half an inch. But it does need to be uh, deformed so it's not uh, it's not hitting the, the stick and, and preventing it from fully deflecting. So, uh, yeah, that's the one I'm going to go with. Uh, I can probably shorten this a little bit uh you can probably see if i well because the perspective it's hard to tell but this one is about three quarter of a, three quarters of an inch taller uh and with you know with the handle on it it's probably going to be up here although the ones i'm making are, are going to be custom it's kind of hard to to explain how they they sit but there will there won't be a whole lot up here it'll be more down here so maybe that's okay. I don't know. You can see that one is almost down to where the uh, the hole is for the or the shaft is for the bolt. So uh, it certainly can't get any longer. Uh, I could probably uh, uh, easiest thing to do is probably uh, work from this end because number one, I think there's a little more room here, uh, and uh, number two, this is the limiting factor that stop right there. Uh, more so than than uh, the slight curve that's, st that's starting here. So uh, either way, I'll I'll just nibble away at it until I can get it as uh, as close to the previous height as possible. Uh, until uh, there's just no more room, and it's probably only going to be a matter of like half an inch. Uh, there's not a whole lot uh, more I can do there uh, because of the you know this curve. Uh, uh, it starts to you know jam up around here. <coughs> So, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to go to the original 20 degree that I did in just the cheapo electrical conduit and, uh, uh, and start making the other one uh, in the next couple days and get all this uh, seat hardware replaced. Uh, I don't have uh, some of the parts uh, to build the wing uh, parts, the, the biggest thing being the Pro Seal. Uh, for uh, putting the ribs on uh, you know I can get everything positioned uh, and apparently bead doesn't send that out until you need it because uh, it has a, a shelf life and uh, it definitely would have been expired by now uh, so uh, they just let me know that you know that uh, they'll have to ship it separately otherwise it would be bad by the time I went to use it Okay, today is Wednesday, September 20th, 2023. So, uh, uh, I finally got this uh, on and bolted on. And, of course, the hole for the, the other side is there. But, uh, obviously, I have to take it off to prime it. So, uh, uh, this ended up being... Uh, it was 3.5 on each side. Uh, you know, 3.5 on each side of the vertex. Uh, I uh, shaved that down to 3. Uh, so it's three on each side, and that seems to be pretty much perfect. Uh, uh, this one, this side I probably didn't need to shave, but I wanted a little bit of clearance between uh, between the end of this and the uh, uh, the post that the screw goes through for the control, uh, just in case there was uh, any more that I could push it down. I wanted to make sure that it was pushed down as far as it could be. Uh, so I took it a half inch on each side and that's pretty much perfect. So three inches on each side and that is uh, a 20 degree bend. So uh, uh, I tried the 30 and it was just too much. So uh, I'm going to go with the 20 degrees. Uh, this is uh, bolted on now with the, uh, an AN3 bolt. So uh, I've just uh, sanded this back down and sanded the, the molly and I'm just getting ready to uh, prime it and then go home. So. Uh, tomorrow or the next day I'll be building the other one and that's probably all I'll have time for. 
Okay, today is Thursday, September 21st, 2023, so I just finished uh, sawing off the uh, stick, uh, and this time, the other one, I, I, I took it completely off, but uh, the other one I took completely off, but this one I just sawed off in place and used an angle grinder to smooth this down, uh, and then a, uh, a die grinder uh, in place to... Uh, to take out the uh, inside and outside roughness. So that stub is waiting for uh, this. So uh, I just finished uh, painting it. Uh, this one, because uh, I, I want to get out of here, I just primed it without uh, drilling uh, the two holes. Right, so uh, this one is uh, on the way. I hung this one over here. So this one has been repainted and it really looks nice so I'm, I'm happy with how that looks and uh, it has just the right everything so <laughs> really happy about that I mean it's a lot of work for just a little uh, just a tiny little curve but that's that's what it took to fit uh, the way I needed it to so uh, I'm happy with that so I'm just waiting for this one to uh, dry uh, I'll be coming out tomorrow sometime and finishing it off and getting it painted and I'll be putting uh, like I mentioned before I'll be putting brackets in there uh, uh, to make it just a little stiffer uh, and uh, uh, remove any chance of it possibly you know working its way out so uh, that is the uh, job for tomorrow okay today is Friday September 22nd 2023 so uh, uh, both of these are out, uh, because I, uh, made some small modifications, uh, to them. Uh, you can see them, uh, sitting on the table over there to, uh, uh, to fit this hardware. So these bolts are a little bit longer and I think that's probably a good thing. The reason I got the longer ones was because I could use the same size for the, the, uh, the rear and the uh, uh, the center of the front so uh, I, I just had to adjust the height of the uh, uh, the center section of those uh, front pieces so uh, those will be ready for paint tomorrow and uh, I can finish putting the uh, all I've gotten done as far as uh, replacing hardware is these uh, uh, two bolts at the, at the rear of the pilot side uh, so there's still a fair amount to uh, to do um, these rear ones are pretty easy it's just replacing the hardware uh, and making spacers so the other job is uh, I gave this a nice uh, even shiny perfect coat of black paint this is the uh, uh, the passenger side uh, and those are the two spacers that I was talking about for the the front section of the seats over there so uh, the, the paint on those is drying. The reason this one has a cutout in it is because there's a bolt that uh, sticks up from the floor uh, about an eighth of an inch. So uh, it's got to clear that. That's why there's a little bit of a notch in that one. And when I make the other two for the other side, uh, it'll have to have one of those as well. Uh, this is the uh, uh, pilot side. So uh, I uh, gave this a little bit of a, a touch up. Uh, it had already been painted, but uh, there was a few spots that were a little matte, so uh, uh, I gave it a, a few more shots, and it looks really good. Uh, uh, certainly by uh, by Sunday, uh, these will be ready to install, uh, and that will give me uh, time to uh, to make a couple more of these and uh, and paint them. So it seems like. Uh, Kind of one step back and two steps forward, and that's that. Really, that's really what it is, because uh, you know I, uh, this looked like it was all done, but I had to take it all out again. So uh, luckily, this back part really there's not much to do. It's just taking the old hardware out and putting the, the new hardware back in. It's the the front ones that require a little bit more uh, effort. So, but I do have all the hardware. Uh, it's just a matter of getting her done and getting everything uh, repainted. Okay, today is Saturday, September 23rd, 2023, so uh, the two projects that I wanted to get done today are finished. Uh, I haven't cleaned up all the, the old hardware and tools and stuff, but uh, 
I've got these uh, uh, these two uh, or all four of these seat mounts uh, com uh, completely completely done. Uh, the only thing that's left to do is put the seat back on, make sure everything uh, lines up. But uh, I've been here pretty much all day and I'm getting super hungry, so <laughs> I'll uh, uh, I'll do it tomorrow. So the other uh, thing that I got finished uh, and these turned out unbelievably well. Uh, uh, both of these sticks are now have those two uh, 20 degree uh, bends in them and they're uh, both mounted back on the swivels and uh, it just worked out perfect uh, these are uh, uh, now well clear of uh, the seats and uh, the seat mounts are mounted with AN hardware uh, I think the only thing I don't like and really, there's no really option. You can see all the, the hex head bolts. Um, I don't know how much that's going to impede uh, airflow, but I think what I want to do is uh, get a large, thin uh, piece of fiberglass and, uh, and just cover the whole bottom side of that to make it perfectly smooth. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to do that uh, <laughs> anytime soon, but... Uh, uh, I'd like to smooth that bottom out because uh, I don't know if I've really had many videos, uh, but that's what the the bottom side looks like. It's mostly clean, but there's some there's some stuff sticking out. And, uh, it would be good to uh, kind of clean that up a little bit. <clears throat> so uh, uh, these, this is done. This is done. These look like uh, they're built like a tank, but. Uh, uh, they're they're reasonably light. They're they're metal, epoxy, and wood. So uh, uh, they're reasonably light and strong. So uh, I'm happy all the way around. Uh, the uh, uh, the next project while I'm waiting for the uh, pro seal to arrive to get these leading edge extensions uh, put on the uh, front of the uh, stabilator there. Uh, I uh, got a little work table that I haven't put together yet. Uh, one of those workmate uh, type tables to uh, uh, to put to help put these together. Okay, today is Sunday, September twenty fourth, twenty twenty three. So uh, I just I'm just going to put this one seat in. I'm not going to put both of them in because I'll just end up having to take them both out. I wanted to make sure that. Uh, those bolts uh, cleared the slides and they do so if you want to copy what I did uh, those are AN4 uh, 46A bolts uh, that go in the uh, uh, in where the slides are they, they have to be uh, that size or maybe even slightly uh, shorter uh, otherwise they'll uh, stick up past where the uh, the, uh, the slide goes through and, and uh, You'll have to get new bolts <laughs> or use a bunch of washers or something and have it look dorky. So uh, um, that's pretty much the perfect size. If I had to do again, I would uh, I would get uh, one size smaller. So these are uh, AM46A. I would have gotten AM45A because uh, 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 there's still a little bit of bolt, a uh, little bit more bolt than necessary sticking through the nut, uh, one size smaller would have been absolutely perfect. But these work, so I'm not gonna complain. The only thing I had to do, uh, because I, uh, and uh, actually I'm kind of preferring this anyway, uh, I, uh, I upsized this uh, part here uh, to use longer bolts. Uh, I could have just gotten uh, uh, three inch AN4 bolts, uh, but I just got them all the same size as the ones that are used in the back there. So, uh, uh, I probably should have just used uh, three inch bolts, but for whatever reason, I uh, I was thinking they needed to be longer. But uh, I mean, it was a bit of a pain in the ass putting those spacers in uh, and uh, you know uh, changing the the mounts, but it wasn't that big a deal, um, and and it still still works uh, and it's still solid and everything is as it should be. So uh, the other part of this project, so the. Uh, my seat is sitting about there so when I push this all the way forward uh, you can see that the stick actually 
touches the uh, the the release for the the seat so I'll have to modify that slightly unless I might be able to get away with it just for myself uh, I can't remember exactly where where it sits but if it has to go any further than that because this is actually hitting the stops uh, it's not hitting the seat the seat handle uh, if it needs to come more forward than that then I'll have to to do some modifications of the handle because it sticks out too far. So uh, that's that. Uh, both of these turned out perfect. Uh, no real issues. Took a while to uh, uh, to get everything measured and making sure that everything fit properly, but uh, both sticks are exactly the same. They both have the 20 degree offset, and life is good. Okay, today is Friday, October 6, 2023, so uh, just uh, finished putting one of these uh, uh, extension pieces together that go on the, uh, 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 the stabilator, so uh, I've got that off uh, in preparation uh, for getting that uh, put on here, and you know, that's the way it sits on the... Uh, on the tail right now of course it's a little bit front heavy now uh, so that uh, that stand is holding it up the uh, the other thing that I did obviously is uh, took that that off uh, back to this uh, so this here mounts uh, you know like uh, like that uh, and uh, what I don't have in here what I don't have in here is the uh, the lead weight that goes in the front there. I'm not going to put that in until I'm ready to uh, to put the whole thing to, together. Uh, so this is just held with uh, Clecos right now. So I've got one of these made. Uh, the other one the other one is cut out, but it doesn't it hasn't been drilled yet. And uh, the uh, the other uh, uh, piece like this uh, will obviously have to be made similar to this one. So uh, what I did was uh, I got the curve as much as possible uh, and then uh, uh, got it started getting it put on here. Of course, once it's, uh, once it's uh, somebody started their plane, so it might be a little loud, but uh, uh, once this is uh, riveted onto the, the uh, stabilator, uh, all that kind of large uh, bulb, bulbing, bulbing out uh, will uh, will disappear and it'll uh, you know it'll be held firm to the uh, to the uh, stabilator. So uh, that one is sort of done. Okay, one complaint I have is the instructions for uh, putting this together and uh, installing it are kind of inadequate. Um, my other gripe is this: there really should have been a note in the uh, uh, in the instructions for the control surfaces uh, to just put these on at that time because then it would have been done and I wouldn't have had to put it on and take it off again because uh, th this affects nothing with the, the control surfaces it could have been put on then is it a big deal no it took me about half an hour to uh, uh, to take it off maybe an hour uh, just you know getting the, the plane jacked back up and and building a platform that would hold it uh, and you know getting the, the sticks in the right position uh, you know so it'll lay flat but uh, you know it would have saved me an hour of, of uh, taking it off for no uh, and putting it back on for really no benefit uh, it could have been put on a long time ago so uh, that gripe aside uh, I just uh, I'm gonna f call it a day today uh, possibly come back tonight uh, but uh, this one is still uh, needs to be made. You know, I figured out with the different clamps that I use, and you'll see in the, the photos uh, you know, how I went about that. Okay, today is Saturday, October 7th, 2023. So I've got the two uh, extensions back off uh, and all of the uh, holes drilled there. I've got uh, these two guys uh, drying right now. Uh, I wanted to uh, prime the inside 
uh, before I, uh, I put them on and then I'll just prime them on the outside with it actually mounted on. So uh, while I have this off, uh, I'm also going to rivet uh, this on uh, permanently and uh, uh, and get it uh, repainted. Um, uh, these were just gonna are just gonna dry overnight, and then uh, if I have tomorrow a uh, time tomorrow, I'll uh, I'll come back out and uh, and get these installed. Uh, don't know if I'll have much time to do anything else, but at least I'll have the uh, extensions on. So today is Monday, October 9th, twenty twenty three. So. Uh, I was expecting the engine to be here today and it looks like uh, it's going to be another day because uh, it's not even at the Ronald Reagan Airport yet uh, and that was the next stop on the on the way to getting here so these guys over here have the uh, lead weights installed now so uh, it's just a matter of mounting these uh, and getting the rib set up uh, inside the uh, the uh, the stabilator uh, and then getting it mounted back on. I'm going to uh, use a very thin coat of epoxy on here and then sand it smooth so this is a perfectly smooth uh, area and I'm going to fill that as well. So uh, uh, it should look pretty nice uh, once it's done and primed and everything so stay tuned. Okay today is October 10th 2023 so look what just arrived uh, I haven't opened anything yet or uh, anything I just wanted to kind of make a quick video of my really expensive box <laughs> so I'm uh, uh, I actually have to get back to work so I'm just going to take a quick look see inside and then uh, get going uh, so these two are off. Uh, I'm uh, epoxying uh, a couple of things in place. Uh, uh, it's not a permanent solution. It's just the, the lead weights uh, epoxying them in place so I can uh, secure them uh, a lot easier. Uh, so this one is completely done and that one I just have to put that piece onto it. Uh, so I'm just waiting for the epoxy to dry. On those lead weights, and then I'll secure them with a uh, with a bolt later. But uh, yeah, these are pretty much done. I just have to uh, wait for that to dry and uh, actually rivet them on. All of the holes are uh, completely divoted, so uh, uh, it, it's just a matter of waiting for these to dry. Uh, unfortunately, I have to get back to work because I took a bunch of time off to uh, to come out here and wait for the engine to arrive. So. Uh, that's about it for today. So I just quickly popped the uh, top off of this because because uh, of course I would. <laughs> uh, so uh, I don't have time to unpack all this and inventory everything but uh, uh, you can see there, there's a lot of uh, accessories that that come with it uh, including the uh, uh, the baffles which is nice so uh, I'm just uh, I'm just going to put the top back on for now and uh, uh, probably uh, go over this with a fine tooth comb uh, tomorrow or the next day when I can get to it. Uh, uh, for now I just need to get back to work. <laughs> okay, today is Sunday, October 15th. Uh, so uh, I did quite a few small things today. Uh, number one was uh, finishing up uh, so I, I filled these with uh, with foam, and uh, uh, I got the uh, the epoxy on the uh, the edges here, uh, nice and smooth. Uh, on the edges here, nice and smooth. So uh, uh, that's all kind of sealed. So I'm probably going to put an access plate uh, around here ish, uh, uh, just kind of forward of these. Uh, once it's on, I can. Uh, I can figure out better, you know, where where the the access plate is. Uh, the big thing, though, uh, is getting the uh, uh, the skin on the uh, the side uh, before uh, I put uh, those on, or put the stabilator back on, and then put those on the the, the stabilator. Uh, it's just this this here doesn't clear the uh, with these on, 
because uh, of this modification or the other uh, project I got done today was sanding this smooth and after I uh, got it all sanded down so I used mostly 220 grit uh, I did also not that it's a big deal but I also uh, uh, riveted this on so uh, this here the uh, is for uh, and I haven't even looked ahead but I, I'm just assuming that it's a gap seal uh, these holes uh, will have a, a gap seal over here but I uh, that's probably in the finishing drawings uh, the uh, uh, I, I literally have not looked so <laughs> uh, but that has to be what it's for I mean why else would those holes be there uh, this is completely done other than a little bit of priming uh, uh, like it's it's getting very close you know I, I can start putting uh, those on that go that go here uh, uh, it can really it's really gonna uh, start coming together very quickly Okay, today is Friday, October 20th, 2023, so just making a quick video here. Uh, I'm starting to do the uh, slot for for this guy, and uh, I have some uh, 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 die grinder bits uh, on the way, and I think they're probably delivered uh, today, so uh, I'm going to check and see if it's actually sitting at the door. And if it is, I'm going to run, go get those, because uh, uh, I really need those to make this uh, slot here. Uh, I'm going to have to take this off. Uh, like I mentioned before, there's a, a, a spacer. Uh, according to the drawings, uh, this has to be like right here. And it actually does match uh, if you measure down there. It's the same, uh, uh, it's the same distance from the edge. So uh, uh, I just had a... Uh, a slight, uh, uh, just a, a thin spacer, and it ends up that that thickness of a, a scrap aluminum is exactly the right uh, thickness. Uh, the other uh, thing, uh, and it's probably a, a very good thing, um, you can't really tell. Well, I guess you can tell on the camera. This might be just like a millimeter uh, crooked. So uh, with that spacer, I can just. Uh, I can just mill it out uh, and and bring it to the right uh, angle, even though this this might be slightly uh, um, you know like a millimeter off. Uh, but it actually works out very well to to do it that way. Uh, I'm going to take this off because uh, it just gets in the way of trying to to do this. Okay, it is later tonight. Uh, I got these uh, Klingon Warbird uh, extension pieces. Uh, I got them primed and I did a very light uh, primer coat over uh, everything because it had been, uh, there was just a few uh, things that didn't look right and I had sanded them out and got them smooth and it just needed a, a one more coat of primer to get it really smooth. And uh, the camera cheats a little bit because it doesn't show detail, but this really is uh, smooth. So uh, I'm really happy with uh, with this. So uh, along that vein, uh, what I've decided to do, uh, and of course I'll be doing that uh, next, the uh, the the rudder and the vertical stabilizer. The uh, uh, those white spots are just where I sanded through the paint into the primer, and I wanted to put a uh, just a coat of primer. In the areas that got sanded down a little bit so it'll be reasonably even that this is already sanded down and really smooth I, I I spent a couple hours making sure that you know everything was absolutely flat and perfect uh, and that white those white spots are just filler where, where I went a little bit too far so <clears throat> uh, that will be ready uh, when I get have the paint in a couple days uh, I'm going to do most of the plane in that whaler blue uh, but the dark blue, I'm gonna just gonna make another stripe, uh, similar to the uh, the black. Uh, but the black will actually be a little bit more angled, so it looks more like uh, like feathered out. Um, so those two uh, those two layers are are perfectly even. So I can just you know make a different design. Uh, <clears throat> it probably does need to be sanded a little bit along the edges, but. Uh, for the most part, those two layers are exactly even. So uh, uh, 
Um, I'm basically going to stick with the same design. It'll just have another darker blue stripe uh, along the edge, and then the rest of it will be that kind of baby, dark baby blue, uh, fire blue, whaler blue, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and the, the same is going to go for this. So uh, this will be uh, that whaler blue uh, with a black stripe this way and then a smaller dark blue stripe. And then, of course, the rest of it's all uh, uh, that whaler blue. So I think this is going to look really awesome. So I got uh, one of these done. Uh, so you have to cut a, a slot here. Um, but uh, uh, along with this slot, uh, you also need to uh, cut out uh, this. Uh, so it's this piece here. So there's a notch at the front. And then over here, there's a notch in that one as well. And those need to be cleaned up a little bit. They're a little bit rough. I just... I just kind of finished doing it and okay yeah that's fine that's good so uh, I'll go in there and, uh, and clean that up a little bit so there's not all those rough edges it's actually not as rough as it looks but it does need to be cleaned up a little bit so this is, this is ready so grinding that uh, uh, to the top was a little was a little difficult you can see where the um, the die grinder slipped a few times <laughs> made a few little scratches but that's not the end of the world so uh this one is done the uh, uh this isn't done uh i want to give it a, a full two days to dry before i flip it over uh, because uh, uh one time when i did that uh that the primer was still just a tad soft and uh, i ended up having to redo a bunch of stuff so that side still needs to be uh, painted of course the the stabilator was painted a long time ago, or primed a long time ago, but uh, the underside of those uh, uh, Klingon war, Warbird extensions need to be done. Uh, one thing I, I, I think I'm going to do when I have time is uh, uh, make a, a fairing for this. Um, I probably could have gotten that a little closer to the, the curve on the front, on the bull nose here. Uh, there's probably about an eighth of an inch gap. Uh, and I was planning on filling that, uh, but I think the better thing to do is just make a, a fiberglass fairing to go over the edge, uh, and it'll look a lot nicer too. So uh, that there's no rush for that, but uh, I think that's how I'm going to uh, cover that that edge, and it'll look nicer in the long run anyway. Even if I had done it perfect, it would still look better with a fairing. Uh, getting in here, I should probably mention getting in here. Uh, really on both sides, but especially in here, you might want to uh, like put a plastic skirt around here because the metal filings with the die grinder are just awful. <laughs> like they just go everywhere. I was just covered in metal dust because the 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 dies uh, uh, kind of grind the metal into a really fine powder, so uh, it just gets all over everything. Uh, I had to. And you can see some of it still on the, the moving blanket here, but uh, just everything was just covered. And you can see on the ground here, there's still a lot of metal laying on the ground. And that was just from today. That's not left over from before. So anyway, uh, I've just got to uh, to put the uh, measure this out correctly. Uh, so that's uh, uh, a fairly long, but not as long piece of uh, half inch molly uh from the the stock i have over there uh so uh, uh i'll have to measure this out and then put uh, the other uh fork and uh, tie rod end uh, on it so uh slowly getting there a little bit at a time okay today is wednesday october 25th 2023 so uh i uh, flipped this over and you can see I haven't painted it yet. Uh, I flipped this over and uh, the coat on here was significantly thicker than the other side. Uh, this has got guide coat all over it. Uh, so I was trying to, uh, to smooth it all out. Uh, I got most of the way there. You can see there's some high spots uh, there and there. But I'm just going to leave this bare. And uh, you can probably uh, see... 
So this is my solution for uh, uh, eventually painting everything. I've got some, uh, uh, these are lighting stands. They're not real heavy duty. I probably should have gotten something a, a little bit uh, sturdier because I had to tie the, <laughs> I had to, to tie this back here in order to keep the stands from falling over. But uh, uh, these speaker stands over here that I already had uh, are significantly sturdier and they, uh, they stand up all on their own so uh, for these big pieces like this and when I get after this one of course I got to sand that down again uh, I will uh, uh, I will use this setup uh, for primer I'm not gonna bother uh, sealing up the sides uh, I just don't want crap falling from the ceiling uh, everything has been sanded down uh, you can see I took the the um, all the Clecos out uh, uh, in order to, to paint it properly and then I'll uh, once it's dry I'll put the clecos back in but uh, there's enough you know support to, to hold it uh, with just the one side in there and uh, hopefully this keeps most of the the dust off of it uh, the uh, the primer dries pretty quickly so I'm not super worried about you know stuff coming in that way uh, it's mainly just crap falling from the ceiling because the uh, like you can see here that, uh, you know, I actually dusted it off a while ago, maybe a couple weeks ago, and you can already see, you know, how much dust falls from the ceiling in here. So uh, that'll at least keep stuff out of the, the primer long enough for it to uh, to dry. So uh, uh, I'm not going to prime this side. I'm just going to do uh, these, uh, let it dry for a couple days. Uh, I have the Pro Seal for the wings now. It arrived yesterday, so I can get going on the uh, wings once I'm done with this little project. So I, I did a bunch of research on because uh, I, I did. I really felt bad about giving up on the uh, the uh, rolling idea because it, uh, it's a very kind of economical and easy way to uh, to get the the plane painted. Uh, the main thing is is keeping the, the the dust out, and I think this setup is plenty large enough to do uh, certainly to do sections of the wing, and uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I can cover most of the plane as well um, uh, in the process. Just you know, getting uh, everything painted in sections. Uh, so th this will be roughly about ten by twenty feet ish so uh, uh, this is just one giant uh, piece of plastic from Home Depot and I, I've got another one that I can uh, uh, that I can make the, the I've got another one over there that I can make the sides with so uh, I have the pro seal for the wings so that's gonna get started soon um, I also want to get started on the avionics but I really don't want to start building cables until I have more of the console built and I can actually measure things out over there. Uh, I have all the tools that I need. I have all the wire. I have all the RF cable. It's all just sitting in a box right now uh, waiting for uh, uh, somebody to bring it to life. So <laughs> uh, a lot of that I'm probably going to do at home. Uh, I just don't want to make the cables longer than they need to be. And uh, it'll be better to kind of figure out where everything needs to go. Um, uh, especially like things like the the auto uh, the autopilot servos uh, that's a, a big one that I'm gonna have to figure out so I'm gonna paint the entire plane baby blue and then the stripes are going to be uh, similar to that black one I'm gonna stylize it a little bit more uh, and the uh, uh, the blue uh, is also gonna be a stripe and they'll feather out on here as well but the, the first coat will just be all baby blue. Uh, so the majority of the paint, the plane will be uh, baby blue. And then the, the rest of it will have those uh, stylized uh, uh, stripes from in uh, darker blue and uh, black. And that's all total boat. Uh, that was the other thing. Like this paint is very robust for, uh, for a one part paint that's not terribly expensive. Uh, like uh, from all the uh, you know moving around and stuff, this is uh, you can't tell because I sanded it, but uh, it's very very tough paint. Like I'm not worried about it lasting a while, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead with my original plan. I also did a bunch of research 
on you know why this didn't turn out that great and just my methodology was all wrong uh, you know, I was basically trying too hard um, the uh, uh, so the one thing the biggest problem was the rollers uh, I, I don't have them here they're at home but uh, if you get mohair uh, rollers uh, uh, by uh, I think they call red tree uh, if you're gonna roll the paint on that's what you want and uh, uh, and you also want to run some uh, painters tape around the uh, roll uh, once or twice just to get all the uh, the fuzz and stuff from manufacturing off the roll so it doesn't come, show up in the paint uh, yeah I'm just gonna uh, put the primer on these and then head out okay today is Thursday October 26 2023 so um, basically all I got done today was, uh, finishing sanding, um, uh, this side of the, uh, of the stabilator. Um, uh, uh, I've got it mostly smooth now. Uh, there's probably a few, uh, spots that are, uh, like you can't feel them, but I can, I can see the, uh, uh, there's still some of that guide coat that's, uh, Basically anywhere that kind of looks like gravel roadish, uh, the, these very uh, you know uh, thin spots. I'm not even going to worry about. I, I really, I'm not really not worried about that. I'm going to give it a final uh, uh, sanding and possibly even uh, filler primer. Uh, I, I just want this to be absolutely smooth and uh, and spotless. Uh, so uh, I'm taking uh, a lot more time with this one. Uh, than uh, than that one, uh, you know. Of course, that one looks ugly because I covered it with the uh, primer where I, where I sanded uh, so far that it it, uh, it got through to the primer again. So uh, that one needs to be uh, sanded as well. But uh, uh, this guide coat is really helpful. So the job tomorrow, if I have uh, a chance to come out, is flip this over uh, the other side doesn't need anywhere near as much sanding as this does I don't think I'm even going to bother with the uh, the guide coat on the other side because it's already really smooth uh, it just needs uh, you know a really nice uh, uh, smooth uh, sanding finish uh, like this has for the the actual paint I'm, I'm going to seal this whole thing off not just uh, have it covered uh, I just wanted to cover it for uh, for these while they were drying uh, these still aren't completely completely dry but they're they're dry to the touch uh, and tomorrow they'll be completely cured so uh, uh, while I'm waiting for that uh, uh, I can uh, uh, flip this over and uh, and get the rest of it sanded and ready for paint Okay, today is Saturday, October 28, 2023. So I realized the uh, I wanted to put a very, uh, very light coat of the uh, the white primer. And I'm just going to put a light coat of primer, and then give it a, a quick sand with the uh, 400 grit. That seems to make a really nice, uh, smooth uh, uh, base for the uh, the paint that's going to go on. So. Uh, uh, that is the uh, color that is going on uh, now. Uh, that's the uh, classic whaler blue. Uh, it's kind of a baby blue. Uh, if you've uh, uh, if you've seen my car sitting outside the the hangar, it's it's about that color. It's probably a little bit lighter, but uh, uh, I, I like that color. I've seen uh, videos of uh, boats, and I think it'll look really really nice on the on the plane, and uh, especially with the uh, the black and blue uh, accents on the uh, edges of the the wings and the fuselage. I haven't done the the uh, fuselage design, but I know what I'm doing for the wings. It'll be similar to uh, to that. So uh, I'm uh, waiting for this to dry. So I gave them a very light sanding, uh, and uh, noticed there was a couple of uh, you know with fiberglass, it's going to happen. Uh, just little uh, I wouldn't call it, they're not dense. They're just like little uh, impressions where the, the surface isn't perfectly smooth. So uh, uh, I just gave them a little touch up of, uh, of uh, fiberglass repair. Uh, this doesn't take very long to dry. Uh, so this was my little rig uh, and that's that white primer. I didn't have to uh, you know, prime the whole thing. I just basically wanted to cover uh, the spots that were obviously a little high 
uh, or actually a little low uh, uh, places where the I just couldn't sand down the uh, the guide coat any further so uh, that's why it kind of looks spotty uh, but once I sand that down it'll be a nice smooth even finish this side uh, didn't require uh, any of that uh, the uh, the uh, primer that I put on this side was much thinner and if I do say so myself, I did a fantastic job <laughs> on this side because it is so smooth. Uh, I went over it with the 400 grit and it's ready for paint. Uh, I did have this pulled out a ways out of the, the hanger while I was moving stuff around. Uh, that's why it's kind of in a different position right now. The only other thing uh, I've gotten done is uh, uh, I just filled in the, the pits uh, from welding that on with uh, epoxy and then sanded it back down so it's nice and smooth. So um, uh, I've got this completely uh, covered. You can see it has kind of a cloudy appearance. That's all I cared about. I just wanted to get a very light uh, coat of uh, a primer on there to... Uh, and that dark spot you see is a shadow. It's not a <laughs> it's not missing paint or primer. So. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, this is completely done it just needs to be uh, sanded down with 400 grit uh, the same as I did with that and you can see the the one side that I did it is also a little bit on the cloudy side just because it did it just needed a th very very thin coat uh, the uh, uh, um, the stabilator ends and the rudder top are over there uh, the lead weight that goes uh, in the end there is a little different from the drawings. Uh, it looks like the same bull nose weights that are in uh, the uh, uh, leading edge extensions. So uh, I think I'm just going to mount it the same way uh, I did uh, as those with the uh, uh, expanding foam. It worked great, uh, and there's uh, uh, it's just really solid. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Uh, once this is dry. Um, it's basically ready for paint. Uh, the uh, instructions say 48 hours. So uh, I'm just going to have to set these aside uh, for uh, a couple days. Uh, it'll probably be more than that because I'm a little slammed at work right now. and I just never have time to come out and, uh, and do anything on the plane except for the weekends. Uh, unless it's just like a couple hours. Uh, so um, those will be dry mostly dry tomorrow and I can uh, uh, I can set those aside as well uh, those also take two full days to dry uh, once that uh, is, once those are dry I, I painted them with a brush instead of a roller uh, and the the, the uh, primer curtained a little bit uh, not a big it's not a uh, it's not bad but it'll need to be uh, sanded because it's quite thick so uh, uh, you know same deal with with this guy I, I put it on a little thicker than it needed to be so uh, uh, I'll have to get busy with the sander and, and get it all nice and smooth. Uh, that primer uh, is uh, it's really tough. <laughs> it, it's difficult to sand because it's so uh, it's so strong but uh, uh, I think with some 60 or 80 grit I can get that done pretty quick. So uh, yeah for these it's just a matter of waiting to dry. I was kind of looking forward to uh, to painting this this weekend but uh, I want to do it right this time uh, and I'm going to completely wait for that uh, primer to be completely uh, uh, dry before I start uh, sanding it and then uh, painting it so again this is going to be uh, this and that well the whole plane is going to be baby blue with uh, black and blue accents the same blue and black that I used uh, before on the on the rudder here that's uh, it has a light coat of uh, primer over top of it so uh, while I'm waiting for those to dry, uh, I'll probably get back to uh, uh, doing the same thing as this one uh, over there uh, and finishing and finishing uh, that. Uh, it's only got one on it right now. I need to cut it to size and put another uh, uh, tie, uh, rod end uh, so I can put the, uh, the forks on it. So though that will go that piece is connecting here and goes up obviously to that crank there okay today is friday november 3rd 
So uh, this guy and the other one over over there uh, have been uh, primed, and uh, after I primed uh, that one, I noticed uh, some little just kind of imperfections on the uh, uh, that I just couldn't see after because uh, everything was mainly white. Uh, so I uh, I filled those little uh, small holes with epoxy. I tried using like uh, bondo fiberglass uh, fiberglass bondo, but it doesn't adhere very well. Uh, the the epoxy works a lot better. So, uh, but it takes a lot longer to dry. So uh, uh, that'll have to wait till tomorrow before I can uh, do the final sanding on there. There's a few uh, drip marks where the primer. Uh, uh, curtained a little bit but it's it's not bad uh, and it's very very smooth I'm glad I took the time to uh, uh, to fill everything in and uh, you know make sure it was perfectly smooth it's gonna look really nice with paint because it's really really uh, smooth and uh, uh, I don't expect any issues with paint at all uh, this one same thing there's a few small drip marks but nothing major they can easily be sanded out uh, and this is the uh, the top of the uh, the rudder. The reason I used gray primer is just you can't see the imperfections uh, when you use white. It's just impossible. Uh, they're immediately apparent with the the gray. And uh, uh, I'm just going to put a very light final top coat of uh, white primer once this is dry uh, as the uh, base for the the paint because the. The paint is quite light, and even though this isn't very dark gray, uh, uh, just a very light coat of white, I'm sure, will uh, will work a little bit better. So I'm just waiting for these to dry. Uh, that'll be uh, uh, two days for complete completely dry, but I think I can I can sand them tomorrow. Uh, this is completely done. Uh, this thing still needs 400 grit sanding, uh, but as far as primer. Uh, I'm really happy with how this went down. There's uh, there uh, there's zero uh, high or low spots that I can find, so I think it's pretty much ready for paint. Other than uh, final sanding with very fine grit uh, sandpaper, uh, so looking forward to that. Uh, and the same thing with uh, the rudder over there. That's been done for uh, well, both of them have been done for a week. I just haven't gotten gotten out here, so uh, that'll get painted at the same time. And uh, these uh, speaker stands that are holding this up. I think what I'm going to do is continue to use these because they work really well to uh, to hold this up uh, vertically, so I can paint both sides uh, and build uh, kind of a a tent using those, and uh, probably just something back here <laughs> and just clamp it. Uh, I think that'll work. Uh, that'll work fine. So. Uh, yeah, it's just a matter of getting everything primed and sanded and smoothed and ready for paint. So the other uh, uh, the other thing I got done today was uh, getting this reattached and uh, reaming out this. Uh, uh, it didn't take a lot. Uh, this uh, the inside of here. I just used very coarse grit sandpaper rolled up. Uh, and just you know a couple hundred turns maybe not a couple <laughs> a couple dozen turns and uh and shaved it down enough that the the uh, the tube uh, goes in there pretty easy i'm just now getting ready to do that, that side you can see the the i took the thing off it's sitting there so uh that uh, uh that bracket is going to get uh, one of these and then i'll use the tube to make sure that everything is uh, is straight one thing I thought I would mention uh, when you go to do this, uh, getting that the the uh, the bolts and the nuts through once this is in the way is a giant pain. Uh, I found the easiest thing to do, and I think it's still up there. I found the easiest thing to do is get a long uh, AN3 bolt uh, and just just screw it through the very front of the bolt, just along just enough to get purchased the. Uh, it's kind of difficult because they're not meant to go through the opposite end. But if you just screw it in just a tad, uh, then you can you can stick you can stick that bolt up in there and hold the nut up against it to uh, uh, to get the screw in. Um, and uh, what I uh, 
what I did was uh, just use some Loctite on the washer uh, to so I Loctited the washer onto the nut so I could just put them both up in there uh, and then uh, put the screw in through the bottom and, and get it going and then I just uh, 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 grip the, there's just enough room to get a pair of needle nose pliers up in there to uh, uh, to hold that on at least uh, on this very far one here uh, to uh, get some needle nose pliers up in there to get some purchase on the nut while you're uh, screwing it down the other ones I could just use with a screwdriver and a uh, 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 a socket wrench so that was those two were easy but the one at the the back here that's near the kind of the top of here was uh, uh, took a little bit of creativity to get the nut back on but uh, uh, yeah that one's done and uh, it's on to the other one tomorrow okay today is saturday november 4th 2023 so uh, i started getting uh, this other one installed so the the easy part is uh, is just putting that uh, that bracket on uh, and I'm getting this installed. Uh, I did uh, put a torque tube across here. Now you can't do that to get make sure that it's even vertically because this is in the way and I don't want to cut it just to <laughs> just to do that. But you can uh, use it to make it sure that it's even uh, this way and it just turns out that it's perfect uh, mounted exactly the same way as the other one. So. Uh, that's a good thing. That means everything is symmetrical. Uh, I got this marked off uh, for uh, uh, you know drilling or uh, uh, grinding out that uh, uh, that uh, slot, the same as that one over there. So uh, uh, I'm going to try and get that done tomorrow. Uh, the other project was getting uh, these completely. Uh, um, sanded and uh, reprimed uh, with all of the uh, tiny little spots that were exposed by the, uh, the the gray primer like I mentioned before the the white primer you just can't see the little uh, you know little flecks and stuff uh, just imperfections in the in the fiberglass uh, until you use like a darker color primer so those are drying uh, they're they're dry to the touch right now but they're not uh, uh, they're not dry. It'll, it'll take a full two days for that to dry. The same as the uh, epoxy primer. Uh, on that note, the epoxy primer does not work well on the on these. Uh, I just uh, it doesn't adhere very well, uh, and it goes on uh, so thick that it's just it's just not usable for this. Uh, this is just a spray primer. <clears throat> And the, the, the same with this one. Uh, the uh, the lesson I learned after uh, priming this one again is that it's it's even though I put the the this one was just really needed just a a very light coat of primer to to cover the the uh, the sanding marks from uh, you know uh, just filling stuff in and stuff. It, I don't think this one actually needed any uh, uh, filler. Uh, this one just needed to be uh, the 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 uh, curtain marks uh, sanded down and uh, and reprimed uh, it's not as bad as the first time but you can see there there's one there and those ones that are, are dark like that uh, really aren't uh, very deep so I'm not super worried about uh, the little bit of uh, curtaining but uh, the lesson that I learned after doing this and okay it's always going to curtain no matter what you do uh, is just uh, lay them down uh, horizontally and do them that, that way but uh, this one I'll have to do a little bit of sanding. I don't think I'll have to reprime it. If I do, so what? Uh, not a big deal. Uh, so uh, all three of those will be done. Uh, uh, this one is just uh, sitting, waiting to be uh, uh, painted, basically. Uh, there's a, a very, very minor sanding to be done with uh, 400 grit sandpaper, uh, just to make sure that everything is perfectly smooth and ready for paint so uh, uh, I'm just waiting for these to dry so I can do everything at one time um, now that paint is a little on the expensive side so I'd rather uh, not uh, do them separately uh, tomorrow I'll get the slot put in there and uh, I can't even remember and finish uh, uh, sizing this and putting the other one of these on there 
and, uh, and hopefully get both of them done. I, I'd really like to get the control linkage done because uh, once that's put in, I can go ahead and bring the, uh, uh, the autopilot servos out here and try and figure out uh, what I'm going to do with that because uh, I really can't do anything with these until the, the primer is dry. Uh, the primer, uh, even after uh, one day, is a little on the soft side. So uh, I'm just going to wait uh, to do painting uh, when those are uh, uh, completely uh, when those are completely dry, uh, and that won't be till uh, like Tuesday. So uh, and today's Saturday. Okay, today is Sunday, November fifth, twenty twenty-three. So. Uh, this second one is in now. Uh, it's probably a little rougher than the than the first one, but uh, uh, it's in and everything is cleaned up and all that good stuff. So the reason this torque tube is in here, this obviously doesn't run through uh, the two. I just wanted to make sure that it was perfectly straight, and it is. Uh, from pretty much every angle, it's uh, perfectly straight. So I don't have to worry about some weird uh, angle you know, going the length of the wing, it looks like it's going to be absolutely perfect. So, uh, this uh, torque tube here actually ends, uh, you know, about here somewhere. There's a little bit uh, extra coming out the, the back of this bracket. Uh, and then there's a, a bolt that goes through there uh, and a couple other doodads that go in there to hold everything together. Uh, so, um, uh, I'm just going to leave that torque tube in there for now. So over here, uh, I got the, uh, uh, I repainted the, uh, that black bracket, uh, that swivel bracket that uh, uh, controls the, uh, the trim tab. So uh, just waiting for that to dry. Uh, I haven't bothered putting the sides on for, uh, for just doing primer. So uh, uh, the reason that looks spotty is just because there's uh, light shining through the the plastic it's actually uh, an even coat of uh, white so the the first coat I put on there was a little on the spotty side and you could kind of see through it so I just touched everything up and put another light coat of uh, uh, bright white primer uh, on uh, on this guy just to uh, uh, just to have a nice undercoat uh, and have it uh, reasonably thick thick because there's you know there's gonna be a few places that I still have to sand down and I still have to uh, regardless uh, go over it with uh, uh, very very lightly with 400 grit sandpaper and I mean very lightly because it's a very thin coat uh, you can see there's a lot of shavings that I haven't cleaned up yet from uh, from uh, uh, you know uh, using the die grinder to, to do out that slot and make the notches in the uh, the two uh, uh, the two beams there that uh, uh, that are just slightly in the way so uh, like here you can see uh, here uh, it, it won't move because I got that stupid torque tube in there but the the it slides through here and uh, you can see that that this one here is in the way and this one here is in the way so you have to kind of cut those out to uh, to get the uh, uh, the bell crank uh, through there so uh, and the reason this won't move, uh, at least not very easily, is because it was never meant to be, to be mounted that way. I just wanted to make sure it was straight. <clears throat> so I think that's I think that's about it. Uh, that's my little hut for the uh, the painting. So uh, I probably won't get out for a couple days, uh, which is probably a good thing. All the paint, all the primer, will be completely dry. So the. Uh, uh, the uh, the ultimate goal for getting all of these done is to uh, to have everything completely done and primed and sanded and perfectly smooth and ready for paint, so I can do uh, uh, both the 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 rudder, the stabilator, and all of the uh, uh, the ends for the uh, both the rudder and the two ends for the uh, stabilator. So uh, now that that part is done, I can't do any more uh, until the wing is mounted because that torque tube needs to be, <clears throat> this torque tube 
needs to be you know mounted you know the end of it is the end of it is like here uh, and it runs all the way the extent of the the wing and then mounts on a bracket at the very end of the at the very end of the wing you know within uh, a week or two these are going to be painted and on the uh, well they won't be on the airframe because I need to put the the skins uh, and get them painted on the back there at least the the first section of it uh, of the skin on the back before I put this on uh, because it's going to be almost impossible to paint anything uh, on the back there once that once that's on there so uh, it'll have to look uh, less like a plane for a while <laughs> while this is uh, uh, while I'm kind of finishing everything up okay today is Tuesday November 7th 2023 so uh, these are pretty much done a thin coat of white primers on there now uh, same with the uh, the one in the middle uh, this one uh, I think there's a few spots on the side and the front that are just a little bit not perfect so uh, I'm going to give those one more uh, shot at uh, and it's just like a couple places where the primer was maybe a little uh, too thick or uh, an imperfection wasn't completely sanded out uh, it's almost there that these two uh, the, the small one and the one uh, uh, the one in the middle are perfect I'm not gonna do anything more to them uh, this one just needs a, 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 a just a few touch-ups uh, and then it's done uh, both of these are dry the the rudder slash vertical stabilizer is completely painted uh, this one has been complete for a while I got that little black uh, uh, bracket uh, repainted on the bottom there uh, that one is fresh uh, and it's drying uh, that paint takes a little while longer to uh, to dry so it deserves to be covered so uh, uh, I cleaned up all the crap that was in here from uh, uh, from cutting these uh, slots out so uh, uh, this is all done and I uh, tightened this back up uh, so it's back to way to the way it should be uh, part of the reason uh, was because I had to because uh, adjusting uh, these uh, requires them you know to not have any slip or anything so um, I'm not going to do it tonight because uh, it's getting a little on the late side. But uh, so I still have this one uh, uh, rod that I'm building, and I haven't done the other side yet. So the the big the uh, the difficult part of that one is getting getting it measured. So the top part. And I believe, I need to look at the drawings again, but I believe this is somewhere around uh, just shy of uh, uh, level with uh, with the rest of the, or at least the cabin of the fuselage. I think it kind of sits like that at neutral, but I have to go look again. I could be wrong about that, but I need to uh, uh, make sure that uh, the neutral positions match the drawing and that the rods are measured correctly because I don't want to run into... The same issue back there where I had to cut a rod in and then uh, put it back together uh, in order to uh, to make it work properly because it was just too long. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, sextuple, septuple, uh, check everything uh, and make sure that it's all uh, uh, even and perfect. But I'm not going to do that tonight because it's too late. Okay, today is Saturday, November 11th. So, uh, I just finished uh, measuring these out and getting them uh, fitted, you know, up against here uh, to get them to the right length. So, uh, uh, these are cut up and welded. Um, I don't know if I uh, mentioned another video. I always, because uh, the welds are never, you know, perfectly smooth uh, I just put a little bit of uh, uh, epoxy over the uh, over it and then sand it down to make make it you know just nice and smooth so uh, those are gonna dry overnight uh, 
that epoxy I think takes about four hours or so to uh, to completely cure but uh, I'm done for the night it's it's quite late uh, it's getting close to uh, six o'clock so uh, the other thing a uh, nice surprise I, uh, after several days I came back and the primer really uh, dried nicely on these uh, there's just nothing to do. They're perfect. So uh, those are ready for paint uh, uh, As is you know the that big guy there and the and the rudder. So everything is ready for paint uh, I just need a uh, a warm enough day becoming very few and far between uh, So if I'm gonna paint it, uh, I either need to do it very soon or bring a, a heater in here long enough for the uh, the paint to at least uh, uh, partially dry. Uh, this is tedious because uh, you have to, to ream out the uh, the uh, the threaded rod end uh, and the uh, the uh, the rod itself. Uh, uh, I I just do like this guy. Uh, well, I guess you can't see him now, but uh, this one is dry. This is one I did a while back. So. Uh, the uh, the the little stud that goes in the in the pipe, I usually grind that down a little bit and then just do a very uh, light uh, reaming on the inside of the pipe, and that seems to work the best to uh, uh, to get those to fit together. And then I just cut a notch uh, in the so on both sides and, and weld it. So uh, that's worked well with ev all the rods I've done so far, and. Uh, uh, these will be ready tomorrow, so that's pretty much all I have for today. Okay, today is Sunday, November 12th, so uh, I'm, I've got these uh, uh, measured out, uh, everything's welded, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the uh, I've got them uh, primed and uh, painted so I'm just waiting for that paint to dry so that'll uh, they can just sit there for a couple days so I started cleaning uh, up the uh, the hanger quite a bit uh, I still got a lot of uh, crap to put away not a lot but some crap to put away so uh, the uh, the window for actually painting this and the uh, uh, and the rudder there uh, and the vertical stabilizer uh, is closing. Uh, I have two days uh, this week that are going to be very warm. Uh, so I think I'm going to uh, get the initial uh, um, painting done the, of the, uh, the light blue on both this and the, uh, uh, and the, the rudder over there. So, uh, these have been ready for a while. I just haven't had a chance to, uh, you know, both a chance to and on a day that uh, was warm enough that I could do it. But it looks like this Thursday and Friday uh, are going to be close to 70 uh, and I can get that done uh, uh, without using a heater. So uh, once these are dry, I think I'm just going to put them in storage until I'm ready to mount them on there because the the skin also needs to be put on there uh, and I've already I've already proved that uh, both of those uh, mount uh, both that and this mount perfectly on the back there so uh, I'm not worried about that I'll just leave them off and then once that I have the, the skin on uh, I can uh, uh, go ahead and, and put those on uh, the big thing is getting all this cleared out so I can put that uh, on the table and start working on it. Um, so I did have to, I did have to make more space uh, up in there for the, that top one. Uh, this one here was fine, but uh, uh, that one I had to make quite a bit of space, and it's pretty difficult to uh, to get your fingers in there. You kind of have to uh, push the ailerons uh, uh, left and right to get it in the right space to put. Uh, uh, to put this guy in there because uh, there's very little room for you to put your fingers in there get a uh, get a bolt in there and, and a nut and everything so uh, uh, not impossible but also not lots of fun unless you have really small thin hands 
So down here, same deal. It's very difficult to get a, a, a bolt down in there. Uh, very difficult. <laughs> so uh, um, that that's going to get be fun uh, once the those uh, rods are dry. Uh, getting that finally bolted in. You can see I got the bolts that I was using for testing there. So uh, it's just a matter of uh, uh, getting her done. The the uh, uh, these will go this will go fairly quick I'm not worried about that it's all this other stuff this big stuff uh, that's gonna take a while okay today is November uh, Tuesday November 14th so 2023 so uh, uh, all I really got done today was getting those rods in there uh, uh, the paint was uh, more than dry uh, it's been a couple days since I, I painted them. So uh, I got those in. Uh, it was fairly easy. Um, I had to take this one off. Uh, there, uh, that one, for some reason, just had just barely enough room to get the bolt in from the one side. Uh, this one, uh, I just couldn't. So I took uh, this. And it's just like a, a millimeter. <laughs> it just will not go in. Uh, but um, uh, I had to take this off and loosen this in order to, you know, swivel it around a little bit so I could get that bolt in from from the other side in there, uh, and then uh, and then screw it back in. Uh, it was kind of a major pain just to get uh, get uh, that back on, but uh, this is done. I just got to put this uh, uh, this piece back on. So. Uh, the uh, and I had to widen up the uh, the hole in this one here just like I did on the other one uh, but I compared the positions of both of those uh, both a neutral and extreme right and left and they're exactly uh, uh, opposed like they're in the exact same position for each one so uh, there's no adjustment uh, as luck would have it the the rods are very close to uh, uh, as long as they can be uh, there's only maybe like uh, an eighth of an inch of thread uh, on the uh, on the forks on the end there so uh, the, the uh, there's uh, uh, there's not much room for adjustment uh, but there doesn't need to be okay today is Friday November 17th so uh, a lot of painting today so uh, this one uh, is probably going to actually be painted black, but I had some leftover uh, paint to, to use up. and uh, It was just enough to do that one. Uh, it needs two coats anyway, and the black will completely cover that. So this ended up being my solution for a, a reasonable attempt at a, uh, a little paint booth or paint hut, whatever you want to call it, to, so uh, there's speaker stands on that side and uh, they're not the most uh, sturdy so there's a couple of ropes and bungee cords holding them onto the much heavier plane uh, and then the other two speaker stands are being used to to hold that so i need to set the phone down so i can open this door and go in there okay so this is the uh, uh the new uh the new thing uh, I'm uh, so that the whole plane will basically be this uh, uh, whaler blue uh, it's uh, baby blue whaler blue uh, um, I just I think I kind of like this uh, this color better the uh, uh, the phone changes the color a little bit just looking at it it's a little more on the greenish not green uh, turquoise side like this the phone makes it look a little bit darker blue than it is uh it's more it's definitely turquoise uh or baby blue this is my little <laughs> this is my little hut just uh miscellaneous crap uh around the uh uh around the hanger used to uh you know to pin it up against uh, uh the walls uh to have a, a reasonable shield i'm not real worried about uh dust coming in from the sides uh, it, it's mo mainly because uh, a lot of crap falls from the ceiling there and this came out so much better than the last time uh, 
there's uh, the orange peel is so minor on this that I'm not even going to bother trying to polish it. Uh, I'm going to just declare victory the way it is. Uh, uh, I like this uh, much better. So I use those, uh, if I didn't cover it before, I use the uh, the mohair. Uh, I think they're called, they're made by a company called Red Tree. Uh, they're uh, mohair rollers. I couldn't find any locally. I had to get them on Amazon. Um uh, the uh and um i, I kind of followed the advice of uh, uh that uh, boat uh painting guy uh on youtube and i used uh, masking tape to uh, uh to pull off the uh the few little pieces of fuzz and stuff that might be on the brush and it worked like a charm like there's nothing in the paint uh, uh you know i'll probably find little tiny mistakes here and there and probably little specks of dust but uh for the most part, it's I, I'm much happier with this, and uh, so that means I'm not really going to bother with the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the vinyl that I was going to use before. So uh, yeah, the these are going to dry for a couple days. Uh, I have a small heater. That's the other reason for the the big tent in here is to kind of hold the heat. I'm just going to put a very small heater in here to make sure it stays above uh, 50 degrees. Um, the weather for the next couple of days should be fine, but uh, I just want to make sure. And I'm probably going to be out here tomorrow and I can check on it, but uh, yeah, these uh, these pieces are completely done painted. Of course, uh, the uh, rudder and uh, the, the size of this need that stylized uh, black and blue uh, on the edges, but uh, for now, uh, it's good enough. Uh, once I have the, the skin on the plane uh, far enough down, I can I can put this on uh, and be done with it. Uh, and you know, same with the rudder. Really, uh, uh, there's nothing preventing me from uh, uh, putting all this stuff back on and you know putting these on the on the uh, uh, front of the uh, you know right there of the stabilator. So uh, yeah, I think that's about it for today. This is pretty much the last task I had to do uh, before uh, getting onto the wings. So I started cleaning this up and then of course I got busy with painting and made a mess again. <laughs> but uh, uh, this is going to be all cleared. And of course this will be out of the way once the paint is dry in a couple days. Uh, this whole hut is going to come down uh, and uh, uh, you know, I'll bring the plane uh, further this way uh, the way it was before so yeah it's just uh, I'm just waiting for this to dry and they'll go into storage long enough to uh, uh, to get the plane done to where I don't have to worry about painting in between the stabilator and the tail uh, and uh, same goes for the the uh, vertical stabilizer ver vertical stabilizer slash rudder uh, over top of the the uh, over top of the the tail there once there's a uh, skin uh, done and there's some special stuff that needs to be done of course there's some uh, there's some uh, uh, fairings that you have to make on the top there so that may that may be a whole nother deal before I can get the uh, the rudder put back on but uh, I'll deal with that when I get to it so this is a 17 row oil cooler uh, it's probably gonna take a little creativity because it's a little on the large side uh, a little creativity, you know, getting it mounted in front of the in the uh, front of the cowl, and you know it's going to have to be angled uh, and a little bit of duct work probably. But uh, the uh, because of the way the the that engine is cooled, uh, it was recommended that I get as big a, a cooler as as possible, uh, and and definitely not use the uh, the automotive style one that that comes with the engine. So. That's what I did. Uh, so this one will uh, uh, will go in uh, once uh, you know I get to the engine. I'm still uh, I'm still working on getting the uh, the mount and everything for that, but uh, and the prop. But uh, hopefully that's coming soon. Okay, today is Sunday, November nineteenth, twenty twenty three. So uh, I came back out here. Um, just to kind of check on how everything was curing and uh, 
the uh, uh, it was surprisingly good. The uh, there was just a few uh, minor uh, curtaining on here. It really wasn't bad at all. Uh, I guess the probably the the worst of it was on the uh, bottom of the uh, trim flap. So uh, <clears throat> uh, that's all uh, sanded down smooth and uh, given a second coat. So what I did for this one, and it kind of takes forever because uh, uh, it's so thin. Uh, so the first coat was was basically ten to one, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, like ten to to 1.5 something like that uh, this one I made it a lot thinner uh, basically four to one and uh, that's probably as thin as you'd want to get it otherwise it's gonna start puddling and it's just impossible to use but uh, uh, four to one actually worked really well it uh, it smoothed out the uh, the orange peel a little bit and uh, uh, really made a nice finished coat on the, the top of this I mean it's still wet so uh, it's probably going to look a little better than it actually is, but uh, uh, you know, it, it looks like it's going to turn out really nice. Uh, I got rid of all the uh, the small imperfections. Uh, I guess there's only one spot, and, and it's impossible to get it on the camera because there's just not enough contrast. But uh, right there, there's a very small amount of uh, of curtaining, uh, like uh, pooling, like pooling of the the paint. Uh, uh, it, it, all, it sort of looks like drip marks, but it's not that extreme. But there, there's just one spot right there that kind of needs to be uh, sanded out and uh, and finished. But uh, other than that, everything is is perfect. Uh, uh, I don't need to put on a third coat. Uh, so uh, the uh, uh, the stable or not the stabilizer, the uh, uh, vertical stabilizer and rudder combo. Uh, uh, it, it's just so awkward to try and hang properly uh, and the uh, the actual nose the the curved part at the end uh, actually turned out perfect so uh, uh, instead of like trying to hang it and, and get it so I could paint both sides uh, I just uh, uh, put it on a uh, on a soft blanket uh, to protect the side that, that's already painted and then uh, uh, painted this side and then uh, uh, tomorrow or the next day, I probably should probably wait two days. Uh, flip it over uh, and do the other side. Uh, that one had a little more curtaining, uh, just because you know you get in a rush and uh, you don't pay as much attention because the thing is so flippy wobbly. Uh, you're just trying to get it done, and I, I, I suppose I could have spent a little more time trying to make sure that it stayed uh, stayed put while I was painting, but. Uh, it wasn't extreme, so I uh, I got that little bit uh, sanded out and uh, the second coat uh, put on, and uh, it looks fantastic. Uh, just looking at it uh, while it's still wet, like it's just phenomenally smooth. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to polish it. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to do anything. It's just uh, it is what it is. Uh, I'm I'm happy with. Uh, with the the finish that I've got here so I'm not going to do anything uh, more uh, uh, it's kind of hard to see through this but I, I don't want to go all the way around uh, those turned out perfect there's there's just nothing to do uh, they're they're ready to put on uh, I'm not going to do anything with them uh, just like the the other one uh, these are probably going to be black but I had some leftover paint and I still do uh, so I figured I'd give them a, a coat of the blue. Uh, of course, it's going to get uh, a final coat of black, but uh, uh, you can tell how nice that uh, would look if I just left them alone. And who knows? Maybe maybe I'll just look at those and say, oh, it kind of looks better <laughs> the way it is, so I'll just leave it that way. But uh, uh, the design that I had is uh, black with the black stripe with a with a blue stripe on the edges of everything. So. Uh, probably gonna stick uh, continue with that that paint scheme you know uh, uh, what I had on on the back there on that one I'm just gonna repeat it in fact there's a very slight line where the the paint uh, transition was that you can sort of still see but it'll be hidden by the the new uh, uh, the new uh, stripe that I put on there just put a, an extra uh, thing of black so uh, that one will get uh, its stripes. This one will get its stripes, and then uh, these will get painted black along with 
that uh, top piece there, the two uh, uh, Lex pieces will just get put on with the uh, the rudder. So the, the mess that was on here got replaced with another mess, uh, but not as extreme. So uh, when I come back out here, uh, I will uh, uh, get, uh, I'll, uh, number one, I need to paint the other side of that uh, rudder and then uh, start clearing off this uh, table to get ready for building the wings. Uh, but I think that's probably a pretty good place to stop this video and just go ahead and publish it. So uh, I think that's going to be it for, uh, for this video. Thanks for watching.